Yo, 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 what is going on, COD Familia? It is your boy BN, aka Mr. Kingdom Builder, and today, yo, we got a hot one for you. So, we're going to be giving you, this is a drama episode, if you will, on what's been happening in SS1. So, I'm going to start off by giving you the current lay of the land. We'll do a little preface history pathing for what has happened thus far. How did it get to this point? And then towards the end, I guess after we do, well, maybe not towards the end, but just after that, we'll then dive into some of the drama pieces that I've been hearing from some players when I had asked. Now, of course, I'm going to keep things anonymous and try to keep things as broad and vague as I can. Uh, again, I did get some permission to show off some uh, chats, but uh, I'm not sure if we, we will or not. I can more or less kind of paraphrase. And let me preface with that. Uh, again, some of these things I can definitely speak to, and I do feel that they are more factual. Other things are, again, more speculation based on what I'm hearing. Uh, however, we'll touch on quite a few of these. It might be interesting, so we'll see where it goes. And as always, if you enjoy the content, make sure you sub, like, ring the notification bell, and if you want to join and be a part of our conversation, hit up the Discord. You can find a link to that in the pinned comment description right down below. And remember, new videos are coming out every day at 14 UTC in-game time, which you can see here. Oops, I actually can't do that. Hang on, we're going to zoom in real quick, right? Bam! Right there, top right. Uh, outside of game, 9 a.m. Eastern. Okay, so let's preface first with how did things get to where they are, right? So let's do a brief breakdown. They're initially started, right, out in zone one, from those, for most of you that know, Forgotten Lands basically became the PvP zone here in SS1. Now, SS1 is the first merged kingdom between kingdoms one, two, three, and four. After season one finished, now we're in, now this SS1 is in season one plus, though from what we've been hearing, it most likely will turn into season two, and one plus is just kind of the temporary uh, uh, title that this has. Excuse me. Whew. And so, as we are here with this culmination that pinnacleized, if you will, right? Kind of hit peakness, if that's a word. And, <laughs> oh, yeah, basically gathered here in, in FL uh, for this region to zone one. The northern alliances, right? Like we talked about before, this is the big thing here. So, if we start here at the north, uh, alliances like TA, TR, um, GRZ, right, which was one here. These alliances kind of came in from the West. And I'll give you an example. If we look at Caltia, right, you can see that you have TR here, right? We have TA. And then if we go over here into Sophrostia, we got 4BDN. And then I think GRZ is somewhere up here on the north, I believe, ROG. Unless they've just totally moved at this point out of here. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, so they moved to Nivola. So, right, then you have GRZ. So these essentially kind of four alliances, uh, and I guess you could say, uh, uh, sorry, NT45, I didn't mention them as well earlier. Right, these kind of, as far as the ones that are still fighting, right? And yeah, you got 4BD1 as well, I should say. Uh, we kind of started over here on the western, northwestern, western side of the continent. And so then you start seeing them kind of slowly move, slowly move over here. And then now they, right, where the big fighting happened was here in Forgotten Lands. And then from the southern side, this is where you had uh, APK, you had YFT, uh, we had GOK, uh, you had, uh, sorry, UNT was there. And, oh gosh, I, I, 10 bucks is, uh, I think Unit was there at one point, Holy was there, POS, uh, right? So you had these alliances that pretty much started off here in Burning Lands and then also in Zoland. So those are the two regions, Zone 1 regions, where they did it. And then essentially they started pushing up north, and this is where they were initially fighting King, right? For those that may or may not remember, I don't know if the King still has any territory up here, it's probably all cleared by now. But uh, at one point, King was essentially right here, around this area. Uh, which is where which is where they were kind of building up and there was a fight that happened between their alliance uh, and I believe uh, either at that time if not shortly after that's where you had 4 BDN 4 BD1 uh, and then NT45 was fighting um, and then at that point it was kind of somewhat evenish right because you had 
uh, right? You had the Southern forces versus the Northern forces. And it was kind of like four to five versus four to five, give or take. And uh, it, it was it was pretty close. And the Southern forces at the at the time, right? And remember, the Southern forces were coming from Kingdom Four, so it was kind of Kingdom Four versus Kingdom Three, Two, and One. Now the Southern forces were pushing, right? They ended up pushing King back, uh, and then they and then they were even pushing more. At this time is when you had T A, T R, and G R Z start to get a little bit closer in joining the fight. I think TA still came in first from my, uh, from what I can recollect. And then it was GRZ, TR, um, and even NT45, right? Obviously was still in the mix there too as well. At that time is when you saw the North getting pushed deeper and deeper into the South, which is kind of what you see happening now. So an example, right? NT45 was able to push all the way down, 4BDM pushed all the way down, TA pushed all the way down, TR was there too as well. I believe they were here, yeah, and then they removed some territory so they could start rebuilding. Um, right, you had K4NG, K2NG, a few others. Well, they felt great. And so anyways, as we move further, oh wow, did I actually not clear this? Shocker, we got to clear that out. So now we get to a point where Zone 2 is opened up, and Atherin then becomes kind of the next staging area, right? So you have the southern forces that more or less get pushed out of Zoland. They have to retreat back here over to Burning Lands. That's where you see POS, GOK, UNT, APK. And then they start pushing from their three gates they captured on the southern side of Atherin, and they start pushing north, right? On the flip side, we end up having NT45 who pushes into that. I think they might have capped this one as well. Yeah. So both. Uh, you have 4BDM that captures this and then TA that captures the Southern. Whew, that felt great too. And so now, based on where they are, this is something that has hit kind of this breaking point. I don't know. Well, breaking point might be harsh. I think it's, it's more appropriate to say that... Based on where both sides have landed, the southern forces just have not been fighting as much, uh, whether that's due just to unit troop depletion, having to wait for heals, but then there's also been some drama, right? So now let's touch on kind of, uh, so at the moment, right, it's kind of peaceful, right? Let me state, let me say that. With where SS1 is currently, it's pretty peaceful. The southern forces really aren't fighting. Uh, the northern forces are probably just, you know, rebuilding expanding going ahead and taking over the zone twos uh and then we're going to get to some of those questions right those big questions on what's going to happen later for now though uh right now let's kind of get into some of the drama llama stuff so i got i took some notes down uh just so that way i wouldn't have to necessarily show off anything from any of the players i'm killing it right now with these i'm telling you guys Whew. Ah, oh, that was glorious. Okay, so we have, at the moment, right, you got, like we talked about with the fair fight that was happening. Now, we I've heard uh, from a few people, not that many to say that this has been confirmed. This is kind of more than one of the speculatory ones. So someone had told me that APK had betrayed UNT, uh, where they had reached out to TA, made some type of deal that basically went a little like this, where... They, oh wow, look at this, I'm just finding unexplored territory all over the place. Uh, oh my god, even over here, look at this, what's going on, how am I missing these? Um, and so anyways, uh, so what ended up happening is that APK reached out to TA, right, this is in this speculation, they reach out to TA, they make this deal, they say, okay, hey, right, we're going to make a deal for, for uh, you to cut off or assist in cutting off UNT, PHL, uh, which I think was green colored at one point. Uh, they said was there to help out, and they pretty much wanted to try and cut off the Zone 2 pass for UNT. And apparently they just didn't want UNT either as an active alliance or having any fighting capabilities for whatever it may be. And that's kind of how the story goes. I will tell you this. I can at minimum speak to the accuracy of that APK had reached out to TA to do some type of deal. As far as the particulars on what that deal entailed, how that factored into PHL and UNT, I cannot confirm that. But I can tell you that they did reach out because I have seen screenshots that show as much for that happening. 
Something else I was told was that APK members, right? Now, when all the, well, let me let me go beyond this, right? So let me do a little side pivot. So then what ended up happening, right, is that you have UNT, who is now, for the most part, joining, from what I've heard, most of their players are joining POS. And when all of this went down, APK members uh, were apparently told last minute uh, or did not find out until last minute that there was this kind of backroom deal that was going on. And that led to some APK members leaving APK and going to join POS. Uh, I'm not sure if any joined uh, UNT or maybe even GOK if they're still in the mix. But I have heard that some had left to go and join POS. Now, that is something I... I, I can probably more, I don't know if I want to say 100% confirm, but I can definitely speak to a little bit more of that accuracy because I've been told that by by multiple people, that that part at the end. So now you're, you're in this interesting situation where, um, right, and then let me, let me talk about POS, right? So POS as well um, had, I, I think, had reached out to one of the Northern Alliances, and I think it might, I don't know if it's TA or another, but there was something about, uh, from what I had heard uh, about, you know, what we're not going to kind of push each other and we're going to try and fight, you know, just fight open field. And so I don't know if that's kind of the similar thing that APK has, right, uh, with them. Because from what you can notice here, right, it's a few things. UNT is the only alliance that has been, had its territory pushed back to the level two pass. So do you make the argument that that kind of corroborates or collab uh, corroborates the story from what we've been hearing? Is it still maybe just conjecture at that point? But when we look at POS, when we look at APK, their territory is still intact. Now, bear in mind, POS did have territory, right, over, gosh, where, where am I looking right now, right? It was, where's that? Oh, right here. So they had it right here. Right, there's this ramp. We showed a video of this when we were showing off some of the SS1 war footage. There was a ramp right here. So they're, they're, they had at least, what, five, five, six more flags until they got pushed back here. But now no one is, for the most part, attacking anyone, right? I mean, if I look here, I don't believe they're doing any flag build-outs uh, on either side. If we go over to the western side here, you can see that I don't think anyone's flags are being attacked, right? So, yeah, no. So no flags are being attacked there. It doesn't look like uh, they're pushing out anymore either on any side. And so for the most part, right, they're kind of at this stalemate, uh, this kind of stagnant point, if you will, uh, where they're going. Now, yeah, they're building a flag out from what it looks like. Is that GRZ? Oh, 4BDN. So 4BDN is building a flag out, but they're probably got, uh, going west over here. They're probably trying to build over to the Necro. And so... With all this in mind, right, that's kind of where we're at right now, which is there's no fighting that's happening. And let me let me state this right for anyone who wants to comment uh, on the the uh, excuse me the validity, the accuracy, maybe the inaccuracy, or maybe just kind of share something from your POV on how things have gone down. I'd love to hear. Right, let me know in the comments below. But now we kind of get to this point, which I think is probably the more interesting of everything. And I'm going to share a little wisdom here, right? Let me give you a little nugget, some nuggies, if you will, as I tell my girls. With where, the, with where the situation is right now in SS1, there's a few things that I think can happen. However, let me first state what I think was a complete blunder by the North, right? And this is, again, right, if we look at, let's do this, if we look at the rankings, Real quick, right? So let's let's go ahead and do it. Let, let's look at some rankings so I can really break this down, right? Shout out to my boy Ghosty, right? Number one strongest player in the game. Uh, and the Shockwave two, Juni three, Ripper four. Uh, okay, so let's let's do this. So Alliance power, right? So let me let me show you first, right? So you can see here, right? Remember that UNT was up here, right? UNT had more power. They were like one point six, one point almost one point seven, and now POS is almost at one point six. And you can see here that even APK, right, is now under a mil. UNT way under a mil. So, right, what used to be right, 9 to 10 alliances about a mil power is now being just further condensed. And if you look at it at the moment, oh, wow, so TA actually filled the remaining spots. And, right, there's only two spots there in Forbidden. POS has two spots available. 
NT45 has one, uh, TR, none, 4BD1, none, uh, so good GRZ. Oh, 140 over 130, wow, so they're probably building back up, more or less, yeah. So, when you look at the situation now, right, you pr pretty much have... Right, it's like a one. It's it's almost it's almost as though it's a one v seven, a one v six. I would say six because uh, APK for the most part, I think, just kind of really did more of like an NAP type. Well, well, it seems that it could have been like an NAP type of a thing. Now, if the whole story is true with what they did against UNT, then okay, right? Then you could make the argument that it's probably a 1, 2 versus 7 at this point, right? Because who knows what's going to happen with UNT. Even if you look at, uh, let's look at territory. Well, they still have a bunch of territory, right? So the thing is, is that if whether or not UNT is just not going to become a fighting alliance anymore and just it's just going to be POS, then you're looking at either a 1v6 or a 1v7 with POS. They're probably not going to fight that. And what this means, and I'm going to circle this all back around to how this really plays into what the North decided to do and how they just messed up, is that they did not calculate ahead of time what the fighting capacities would be for both sides. If you remember in one of our previous videos, we did a breakdown of this, right, where all they had to do, I think we, I think we were saying at the time, all they had to do was just have forbidden, switch sides. Right, go and join the Southern forces, and you would pretty much have near equal power balance between the active uh, forces then of the North, if you totaled up their total power, and the active forces of the South. Right, you would have near. I mean, it was like what 100k or 200k power difference, I believe we talked about. And so that to me was the biggest blunder here. Right, they had great PVP engagement, great PVP participation in Zone One and Forgotten Lands. I mean, it was just bananas. And now, in Zone 2, there was barely any PvP, right? It was like they were just throwing stones at them, so to speak, and the other side was maybe just chucking wood, wood, uh, wood branches, if you will, uh, <clears throat> right? Just, just because there just wasn't enough morale, there wasn't enough motivation, there wasn't enough enthusiasm and belief, probably, where the Southern forces felt that they would have been able to do something against the North. And so now you get into this situation, which is why I say the North really blundered this, because really what happened is, right, when you think about the decision from TA, TR, GRZ, and any others that had came in later, is they really should have filled in to, and this is one of the things that, uh, this is one of the things that I often talk about when it comes to understanding player psychology. You have to understand that, the way that the power visually looks is a big psychological factor, right? This is like psychological warfare before the fighting actually happens. And to understand this, right, let me, let me go back here and I want to, I'll give you guys a brief little master class here because I'm such a generous soul. So if you have this like we like we showed about in some of the in my previous video right where we, where we did all the data and the and the number the number crunching. If you have essentially POS at 1.5 1.6 bill, and then you're and then you have all these other six alliances, do you think that's going to encourage POS to say, yeah, dude, we're gonna fight all day every day and give these others a run for their money? No, that's not. It's the complete opposite. If anything, it discourages. And demoralizes them to not want to necessarily fight. And it doesn't mean that some of the players won't fight, right? That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is that visually speaking, when you just look at the numbers, it, it doesn't justify, it's not rational, it's not logical for POS to say, yeah, we're going to waste all of our resources and fight this 1v6. That doesn't make any sense. And that's why I say that you have to understand how a player's mind works is that it's not just what are they seeing on the screen? What are they seeing in how it looks? But it's what are the other members talking about as well? And this is one of the things that I have constantly preached on ever since I started playing Kingdom Builders and, and at the same time from um, also making content is that if you want to have amazing 
sustained fights and constant PvP, you have to organize. You have to understand that you can't have lopsided fights. Because this is what will happen, which is basically what's happening now. And let me give you exhibit A, my pimpinish friends, is that you're in a situation now where the North has pretty much won the war. If the, if the South doesn't fight, what are you going to do? You only have a few options. Option one, you continue fighting and you keep pushing them until... All of the southern forces have no territory left, and you just start zeroing all their players. Okay, awesome. Well, you're going to lose probably maybe 100, 200 active PvP fighters in the kingdom. Who knows if they'll continue playing. Maybe they'll stop. Maybe they'll wait till the new season and come back. Maybe they'll quit the accounts altogether, right? Nobody wants to be utterly obliterated. Even though it may seem fun to you, nobody wants to have the stick left at the end of the game where you're by yourselves, that's option one. Scenario two is where the northern forces maybe say, okay, you know what? We're not going to attack you guys anymore. We'll let you build up and maybe we'll get some more PvP later. Not knowing that because you haven't changed the who's on whose team, you're still going to end up with the same outcome, which is that you're probably not going to get a lot of PvP at nowhere near as much as you got in Forgotten Lands, which was, let's be honest, freaking glorious. Who doesn't want that all day long? Option three. The North decides, you know what? We're going to give you, or we're going to, we're going to say, we'll, we'll send this alliance and that alliance there when Zone 3 opens up. And then we'll fight it out. And we'll just give you some pathing. Okay, okay. You can, you can start selling me on that pipe dream. Right, Because that's something that can now be believable. Option four. You know what? We're going to give you guys Atherin. Or we'll say, yeah, we'll give you guys one, one zone, two zone. We'll take the other two. And then we'll meet up in zone three. So that way, that way they're able to develop and recover at a faster rate. So that way the fight, if it does happen in zone three, will be better. Duh. Option five. Option five is that the North decides, you know what, we're just going to split our alliances in half and we're just going to fight against each other. That could be something that could happen. Option six. TA decides they're just going to YOLO brick squad and run everything and then they create a situation where it's okay yeah we're just going to run 1v6 or 1v5 <laughs> right so and that's the thing is that if you think about it right logically and again i don't know how ta's playing what out but you know i've heard some things and it it, it kind of i will say this it, it does feel as though it's trending in a certain way when if, for those that played in, in Kingdom 2, or if you've watched any of my content on what happened in Kingdom 2, right, it, it kind of makes sense, so to speak, on what we're seeing, on, on what we saw from TA in their decision to do what they did in Forgotten Lands, right? That, to me, is a trend when it happens a, a very similar way in one kingdom and then happens a very similar way in the next kingdom. Uh, and remember, that's a choice. I'm not saying it's good or bad, but I am saying that that's a trending choice. So if we look at the Alliance power rankings, you can see here that it's at, let me see, that it's at, right, 2.6. You can almost argue, right, it's kind of, I mean, what, it's, it's like the number three and number five Alliance combined, right, so to speak, maybe a little less than that. I mean, obviously, they're a little less stronger than if you were to combine two and three, but Again, it's one of those things where, you know, maybe it's TA and TR versus everyone, right? It's just, the challenge is that you're in a situation right now where you're either going to, right, kind of be the true bullies, or, or I don't want to say true bullies, but just bullies in general, right? Where you're going to go through and just run over Kingdom 4 in, in Burning Lands, you're going to make some type of decision that is going to create a healthier 
environment within SS1 so that way less players will drop off, less players will stop playing, less players will not choose to participate in future PvP. Or you're just going to have some type of maybe continued backstabbing, maybe other alliances are already talking right now, and you know maybe there will be some fight against TA, TR, uh, any of those alliances that came from that side, will there even be a split? Will they just stay united and maybe they'll do some type of organized PvP that we'll be able to watch and get in on? There's still a lot that's up in the air that we just don't know what's going to happen just because we don't have um, any kind of updated information at this point. However, it is fun to speculate. It's fun to talk about what the scenarios are, but these are really important when it comes to if you have a vision and you have a game plan for how to sustain PvP. Because, let's be honest, the most enjoyable part so far about Call of Dragons is literally the open field PvP, right? Pass rallies and counter rallies, okay, that's cool, right? But the, mo the, but the, mo the most fun in COD is the open field, the ranged PvP, the keep play, the barricade play, the active artifact skill usage. That is where the bread and butter is. And that's really what you want to try and and have, I don't want to say it's active, but you want to try and have that be as utilized as possible. So with all of that being said, that's pretty much it for me. Uh, again, I actually didn't expect to make uh, this video be as long as it is. But for those of you that enjoy watching or even just listening to these in some type of podcast format, <laughs> because I just like to talk, you know, then that's dope. <laughs> I love it. Uh, again, like I said, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, right? Uh, again, whether it's something that I spoke to uh, with it with accuracy, with speculation, right? I want to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you guys think down below. That is going to be it for me. As always, until next time, I will catch you later.